Okay, and so if we do decompose C, then that's actually going to be 0.8x plus 3. Okay, and of course, if you simplify that, that's simply 0.8x plus 3. Now, this is going to be a smaller number than 3. Less than 3. This is going to be a smaller number than 3 because we're taking 0.8 times it. And what, what we're really trying to figure out is which one of these we get. What, what's a real world answer for the total amount paid? Is it going to be 80% off the original price plus 80% or sorry, 20% off the original price plus price, I can't speak, plus 20% off of the $3 delivery? That doesn't seem correct. It doesn't seem like I would get a coupon off my delivery in the real world. Or is it going to be 80% off the 20% off the original price plus a $3 delivery? Well, this seems correct. So this is our equation over here, decompose C with the coupon applied first. And so this is what I would write. Decomposition C is equal to 0.8x plus 3. Okay. Uh, no. Okay. So, what would be the best price? Okay, so again, this is kind of a similar uh, similar question. I think there's a typo here. I think this should have said um, versus some sort of direct discount off or something. We have a coupon, and then I think there was a discount, so I think I've got a typo on my page. Um, but again, the same thing. You would figure out your coupon which is 0.8x, you would figure out your discount and let's just um, pretend it was 100, it was, sorry, this is pizza. Let's pretend it was $5 off, so x minus 5. And then you would do C compose D, which is the discount first, and you would do D compose C, which is the coupon first, and you would tell me which one's going to give me the better price, and how would you figure that out? Well, test a number that's easy. I know you're probably not going to spend $100 on pizza, but $100 is a nice even round number that we can do percentages with very simply. 80% of, or 8.8 .8 times 100, you know, should be AD, okay? This one asks if the graph is symmetric about... Uh, where the graph is symmetric. Well, currently the way it is doesn't help me recognize what function this is. So if I get y by itself, that means divide by x on both sides, then I'm left with 5 over x. And again, I can simplify this to show me that that's actually 5 times 1 over x. And look, isn't that a parent function? In fact, that's the reciprocal, inverse, rational, whatever you want to call it, parent function, which looks kind of like this. Okay, and so it's telling me, what am I symmetric about? Well, if I check my y-axis, it's not the y. If I check my x-axis, it's not the x. But there's one more to check, isn't there? There's with respect to the origin. So if I take this and turn it 180 degrees, and I take this quadrant and turn it 180 degrees, and check my other two quadrants, well, they'll still be blank. Guess what? That is symmetric about the origin. What's another way I could have done this if I hadn't um, recognized that this was a parent function? I could have also plugged it into a graphing calculator. Or, of course, tested my symmetry. That's another one. Okay, here we have another one, even, odd, or neither. Again, if you have a calculator, plug that in. Make it real simple. But you can't figure it out if you don't know what graphically these look like. Graphically, this has symmetry about the y-axis. Graphically, this has symmetry about the origin. Graphically, this is something funky or symmetry about the x-axis. It's one or the other. So, but how do I actually test this mathematically? Mathematically, we test this by checking f of negative x, right? We talked about this uh, quite a few slides ago. So I would plug that in. But what the way my function is currently, I may not recognize it, right? If I plug in negative x minus 1 squared plus 4 times negative x. Well, a lot of us might say, okay, well, that's 2 negative x minus 1 squared minus 4x. Well, that's something funky. This is a neither function. However, some of us might recognize that this is an x squared function that's just been transformed. And an x squared function that's just been transformed, well, that has to have symmetry about the y-axis. And I don't see anything over here. It's not a rational function. It doesn't tell me there's going to be something funky happening. So it's probably, it probably has to be even. Well, why didn't I see that it was even? Well, I didn't check this little situation over here, there's an x minus 1 squared. Well, that doesn't mean that that looks like x squared minus 1 squared. No, in fact, that's kind of how we tested it. And because we tested it with a distribution of that exponent, we 
saw something that looked very wrong. So the very first thing I have to do is get rid of that minus 1. So I FOIL that away, and that becomes x squared minus 2x plus 1. So then I put that back into my original equation. My 2 is on the outside, and I have 4 times x. And I keep simplifying. And that becomes 4x, and that becomes 2 plus 4x, and look what cancels out. And now we're left with a function I can actually test and know with 100% certainty that I'm going to get back an uh, even odd or neither. So if I plug in that negative x, that becomes 2 times negative x squared plus 2. Well, negative squared will always be positive. Anything squared will always be positive. And so this is an even function since I return back the original question. Finding the inverse, again, I simply switch x and y. If I did this graphically, I would have to see that this had symmetry with respect to y equals x. So on my graph, my horrible graph, if I have y equals x, whatever my function is, I have to be able to fold it over that y equals x, and it's going to track back and look the exact same. Pretend that that's actually symmetric. So, but how do I test this graphically, or sorry, algebraically? Remember, I simply switch my x and my y. So this currently looks like y equals 3 over x minus 2. So that's going to become x equals 3 over y minus 2. And now I want to solve for y. So I'm going to multiply the denominator. It's the very first thing. We want to get rid of that denominator. So that becomes x times y minus 2 equals 3. Now I want to get my everything away from that y. So the first thing I can do is divide away the x. I'm left with y minus 2 equals 3 over x. I can add that 2, and there's my inverse. Ooh, excuse me. We have a question here. Use the table determining the following. And here's our table. But my hint to you is what's another way we can write a composition? So I can recognize what this is. The other way I can write a composition <laughs> is f composed g of 1. Well, this helps us recognize, hey, I can just break this down into parts. Well, what is g of 1? Well, I go to my g, and I go all the way to x equals 1, and there's my answer. It's 0. So I plug this in right here, and that becomes f of 0. So I go to my f, and I go to my 0, and there's, there's my end answer. My answer should have been five. Oh my gosh, I have hiccups. Whew. Here we have another one, except this time instead of a table, you're actually given the graph for the for their plot points. <gasps> Excuse me. So again, we break it down. What's what's the inside going to be equal to? F of negative one is equal to. I find my y equals f of x, and it's this bottom line. I can see it right here. And I go to negative one. And I see that its value is positive 1. So then I type plug in g of 1. And I look at my g of x, which is right up here. I go to the x value 1, and I see that it's equal to 4. Here we have a few more composite, a, comp, yeah, a few more compositions. I'm going to try to speed up because we're at the end, and I think I'm reaching the end of my recording as well. So again, this looks like f of g, g of x. So I'm going to put g on the inside. g is going to be applied into my f is f's variables. So that becomes, there's my g. It's, it's squared plus 4. Well, this is going to cancel out. So that becomes x minus 2 plus 4, which is simply x plus 2. So my f composition g, g is going to equal x plus 2. But the other question it's asking is the exact opposite, G composition F. So that looks like G of F. So I'm going to put F into my G. So that becomes the square root of my F minus the 2 because that's the original. And here I can just simplify underneath the radical. So that becomes X squared plus 2. And this is G composed F. So recall, f composed g was x plus 2. g composed f is equal to the square root of x squared plus 2. And my next, class, my next slot asks me, are these commutative? Well, no, they are not, because going from f composed g to g composed f does not give me 
the exact same equation. So they are not commutative. And this is just a recall. Properties of comp compositions do not guarantee they are commutative. You have to test them. We have another question here that says,